What was the example we started with first thing in this lesson? Derivative of what? Or cubed. Good. Now, the reason why I had to go with this one was because specifically you can do this without the chain rule. You don't need the chain rule for it, which is nice because then you can verify that when you do the chain rule, you get the right answer, which is what we did. And then you look at this. There is no expanding to do on this function. You can't expand that. There's nothing to expand. If I were to write it in index form, by the way, why would I write it in index form? Why is that instrumentally useful for me? Because then I can use my, my rule for differentiating powers because it's in index form. So it would be this, 25 minus x squared to the, good. Once you do that, it becomes clear. There's no, this is not binomial theorem. There's nothing to expand here. You're stuck. now. This function is a semicircle. How do I know it's a semicircle? Apart from just recognizing the form, how would you be able to convince someone this is a semicircle? Oh, no, wait. Eric, you got your hand up? What would you suggest? Because it's got the same sort of equation as a full circle, and the reason it's only half is because it's restricted by the radical. That's a good argument. We've got something that looks very similar to a circle. Maybe that's not quite as obvious to you. So maybe off on the side, you want to write this with me. If this function were named y, and y was the square root of 25 minus x squared, then that square root sign implies a restriction both on the range and the domain. I don't know why I said it in that order, but anyway. The domain restriction means that you've got to have x being between negative 5 and 5. Do you see that? Because if it were bigger, if it were, say, 6, you'd have something negative on the square root. That's a problem. But in addition to having a restriction on domain, it restricts range. In what way? No matter what x you put in there, by definition, which we love so very much, the square root is positive only, right? So therefore, well I should say it includes zero, you've got this range restriction. Domain restriction this way, range restriction this way. So now when you square both sides, keeping that restriction in mind, like that, you can see it only takes one more step to be able to recognize, oh yeah, it's a circle, center at the origin, radius 5. Does that make sense? But it's not the whole circle, there's a restriction, so here is my drawing. Okay? Now, I picked this out so that we can demonstrate. If I wanted the gradient at a particular point, like say here, this is, uh, what have I drawn? I've drawn 3, 4. Okay? How will I find it? Well, let's see how good you are at the chain rule. What Substitution should I introduce? U. Let u equal that inside function there is 25 minus x squared. Having done that, I can differentiate with respect to x because that's that's the variable in this function. What does that 25 give you? Nothing. Nothing. What does the negative x squared give you? Negative 2x. So far, so good. Now I've got to have dy on du, so I actually need to write y as a function of u. Well, it's just that u to the power of a half. So what's my derivative with respect to u? Bring that power out the front, and then reduce the power by 1. Yep, okay. So this is actually 1 on 2 root u, which is this. Do you agree? Now I can combine them. Now I can do the chain in chain rule. I can say the actual derivative that I'm after is, let's have a look here, there's du on dx, and there is dy on du. How are you faring so far? Are you okay with the way that we strung these together? You can see I can do a further bit of simplifying here, and I get this. Uh, sorry, x. Oops, that, I cancelled the wrong thing. Okay, now, before we move on and actually evaluate this, do you notice, just look carefully at this object before we move on, the denominator, right? What is the sign of the denominator? The sign of the denominator must be positive all the time. Why is that? It's because of this restriction we were talking about before, right? It's the square root, must be positive. But this guy up here, the sign changes. When x is negative, that's on the left-hand side. If x is negative, what is the sign of the numerator? If x is negative, 
then it's a negative and a negative. So this is positive, this is positive. But this is the gradient function. Why does that make sense? Look at the semicircle. Do you see the semicircle? When x is negative on this side, well look, it's increasing, it's going up. Any tangent you draw is going to be this upward line. Does that make sense? Whereas if you supply a positive value of x, that'll be negative, that'll be positive, and that's why you see all of these tangents will have a negative gradient. Is that okay? So you can see here, if I now evaluate the gradient, oops, the gradient function at x equals 3, can you tell me what we're going to get when x equals 3? Tell me what to write. There's the numerator. Square root of 25 take away 9. So this is minus 3 on, that's 16, isn't it? So this is negative 3 quarters. Okay? Now the reason why I highlight this is because there's a really important property that this tells us. Here's the tangent. We've just worked out that its gradient is that, so that's why it's leaning down. Okay? That's the gradient of the tangent. What is the gradient of the normal? It's 4 and 3, right? 4 on 3? 4 on 3. So in fact, the normal in this case is not just any line, it's the radius. And the radius keeps on going. Right? So in the extension 1 course, we will get to circle geometry later, but one of the important properties is that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. And this is one of the nice, neat ways to actually prove that that's the case, and a required chain rule. Okay?